old avenue to stroll nowhere to turn to because the friends turn cold. Who you gonna call when the people that you love don't got no more love at all? Bridges all burned, not a single lesson learned, and you're still paying rent to your flaws. Wasn't really worth it. It's never really worth it when the sun shine light on the dark. Bridges all burned, not a single lesson learned, and you're still paying rent to your flaws. Pray, 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 go, 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 go. Pray, pray, pray. I can remember performing at the lounge like it was yesterday. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. 18th Street Lounge um, definitely shut down because of the pandemic. All the places that I used to rap at and make money are gone. Like, they aren't there anymore. So, like, now I'm, like, caught in this, like, mindset of, like, okay, well, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. Black man, new president I might be. Turning ghettos to paradise, we drink our iced tea, the light speed. Gleaming in the distance, they be shining a reminder of tomorrow. Keep your marbles, keep on grinding. I'm relying on these two hands, gripping the future constantly. Son of a preacher born, even they say. The boy was headed straight for prison, y'all are squeezing the trade. Cause I was wild and kicking dust up on the streets that I stayed. But I was all about loving the night, a season, a day. They kept my name in the dirt next to mom, dukes and all. Back up against the wall, watching pieces of the sky fall. Pushing was their weapon, but I didn't have a thing. Always knew I was a champion, but didn't have a ring. I love DC, you know, it's definitely transforming, you know, with gentrification and all those things. Um, my boy, my boy Odyssey said something and I never thought of it like that. He was like, uh, gentrification, it cleans up the, it cleans up the neighborhood. So you're safe, you know, you're safer in your neighborhood, you know, but, but now your friends can't afford to live here now. You know, like the mom and pop shops that you used to go to and get ice cream and all these other things, they're gone now, you know. But um, you're safer in your neighborhood. So it's interesting, like, I live in Columbia Heights. Like, I don't, I literally don't have to watch my back now. Like, I used to have to watch my back all the time walking up 14th Street. Like, so much I used to watch my back, I have to watch my back. Now, it's just like, I'm in my own, I can literally let my imagination roam and explore as I walk up 14th Street, you know? So the, the neighborhood is definitely a lot safer, but certain friends aren't there, you know? Certain friends have, were forced to move out to PG, you know? So um, it's weird, like the grocery store before gentrification, my giant was horrible, it was horrible. After gentrification, this new giant is amazing. It stays open 24 hours a day. You know, the other one closed at 10 o'clock. The produce is always good. The other giant, the produce was moldy, you know? So it's like, you know, it's, it's, um, it's like a love-hate thing, you know? Because I love that the neighborhood is safe because I live in the neighborhood, you know? But I hate that my friends had to move away and that they can't afford to live there now. You know, I can afford to live there because I live in my grandma's house that she left to the family, you know, but 1500 bucks for a studio apartment is not affordable. Like that's it's outlandish, you know, so I don't know. There's a love-hate relationship with the gentrification that's taking place. <laughs> pandemic thing has taught me about ownership you got to own your space if you don't own your space the people who own the space be like hey man you got to go you know this it's not like it's not like you're a tenant there you know in terms of you're living there no you're you know if that was the case they wouldn't kick you out you know but 
your business, you're renting the space, and they don't care. You know, they're like, listen, we want our money. You don't have our money? Well, you know, don't take it personal. You know, <laughs> that's just what it is. So just to see, like, businesses just fall through the cracks, um, not a lot of small business loans and help. Um, I don't know I don't know around the U.S. I just know in D.C. it was really tough for a lot of small businesses to stay open, venues to stay open. Um, I think things are changed permanently. I think things are permanently changed. But even in those permanent changes, I don't think the changes will become that drastic, um, especially now that there's a vaccine, quote unquote. So um, I got vaccinated. I know people who are skeptical about vaccinations, and I get it. They should be skeptical about vaccination. This country does not have a good history pertaining to vaccinations. You're right. Uh, shady activities. Um, Tuskegee experiments ended in 1979. My brother was born in 1979. It wasn't that long ago. You know what I'm saying? So uh, people are skeptical, and rightfully so. But um, I don't know. It's um, give and take. But I do think um, things are going to change permanently. But I don't think those changes will be that drastic. And um, I think ven I think venues will open up. I'm more, int I'm more intrigued about what will be the new venues. What are the new places that will open up? Who will be susceptible to letting bands have a consistent residency and not just get caught in gold rush fever, you know? So I, I'm intrigued on to see what what will happen there. So um, yeah, I think it'll be cool, and um, I'm intrigued to see what will happen. Um, I started reaching out to some festivals recently to see what's going on, and um, so yeah, I have a list of festivals that I'm I'm gonna start reaching out to continuously and see what happens. <laughs> I should have did that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you got a lot going on there. I do got a lot going on here. <laughs>